I'm gonna show you how to take a time lapse that looks like this. And make it look like this. I was thinking for this segment, maybe I would actually jump into the studio and leave it up to you. You're talking to me? No, yeah, I'm talking to you. Okay. Just show them how to edit All the video. Right. Today we're going to jump into Adobe Premiere Pro and enhance our time lapse. I was going to add a motion blur to get a nice effect to the clouds, but it actually didn't do much, so I just like the footage we got. I'm going to use Lumetri and color correct it and do some masking. Check it out. Let's go. So I've got a sequence open with the time lapse on my timeline. If you see, I can scrub here. There it is. Now I actually have a finished product here as well. And I'm going to walk you through the process. The first thing I want to show you, though, is that I am working in the color workspace. So you go to Windows, Workspace, Color. And I am always working in the color workspace. It's my favorite workspace to work within. If I ever want to go to Effects, I can always just click on this drop down and go straight to Effects. And I can add transitions, any presets that I have right there. And if you go up to these arrows, right click, you can click on Lumetri Scopes. There's also an option right here to do that as well. And you'll see a bunch of diagrams here that are very confusing. And I'll be honest with you, they're confusing to me as well because I have not quite mastered them yet. However, on this first one here, as you see when I scrub my timeline, same thing with this histogram right here. I'd like to point out that if you right click, you can kind of choose which ones you want to look at. And so for this waveform, for instance, as I scrub along, you'll see that the clouds are moving on top and the lake is kind of more stagnant at the bottom. So it is kind of interesting to look at the graph of your colors and kind of play around and assist yourself with what you need to do, especially if you don't have a correct white balance or something that you need to fix and you're seeing that in your graphs. And if you go underneath basic correction, you'll see that there's an input LUT area. This is all presets you can choose from. Basically, if you go to browse and then go to your Adobe program, Adobe Premiere Pro, and scroll down till you find Lumetri, then go to LUTs, Creative. You'll see all of these that I have. Now, I'll just choose a teal and orange look. And you'll see the color of my image completely changed. And so you'll see that there's a basic correction. And that is where you kind of live. If you didn't quite have the ISO correct on your camera or you didn't have the white balance and you're just trying to basically just do a basic correction just to correct the color within your image. And I personally like to use it to pull out shadows and contrast because I like to pull that kind of thing out within an image. And so what I do here as I scroll down is no exception. I play with this contrast and I started looking at my clouds and I realized that the more contrast I gave it, the more the actual form of those clouds started to show. Same thing with the shadows. Because if I was to brighten up the exposure too much, I would start losing that sky and that's what I don't want. I really want that time lapse to show the definition of those clouds as they're moving across the sky. Now, the problem that I ran into was that trying to get this sky to look good was making the bottom half look terrible. And so what I ended up doing, as you can see in this final image here, is I ended up creating two different images. One was a color correction on the bottom landscape. The other one is a color correction on the clouds, just to bring out what I thought was best for this image. And so what I ended up doing is a mask which I'm gonna show you in a later video when we do a sky replacement. But for now, let's focus on the actual color correction. And so on the right hand side, I wanted to get a little bit creative and I'll just show you within these two clips here. Right now we're on the bottom half, we're on the landscape. And you'll notice that I really pulled up some saturation here. I kind of left the vibrance alone. And if I go into the basic color correction, you'll notice that my exposures 
up just a hint. My contrast is up and then I brought the highlights way up and the shadows if you bring the shadows down, that's where I really started losing those trees. And so I made sure to bump it out. Now, I didn't want to get too crazy with it because I thought the image just started to look a little washed out at that point. So, But with the top image, I kind of had the opposite effect. I actually lowered the highlights. I lowered down the shadows. I brought the whites up and the exposures up just a little bit. And the contrast... I guess I went a little crazy with that. I put it at 100% because I really wanted to bring that depth out of those clouds. And so I went down into creative here, and I'm surprised that I didn't pull up the vibrance, to be honest with you. I love making things a little bit more vibrant, but I guess I thought it was good enough. Maybe because it's, yeah, it's starting to look a little too fake. It's starting to look a little... Look starting to look a little too fake when I do it like that. Although that is kind of cool, a little purple sky there. That's pretty sweet. Anyways, you can go down in here to the color wheel. If there's too much red in this image, you can just click on red and just pull all the red out. Check that out. Now, again, we're just working on the top half, so that's why you only see the top half changing there. But same thing with green. Let's, let's click on the bottom. Now, we've got a bunch of green trees. Let's see what happens when we pull all the green out of this image. Yeah. And now let's pull the red out. I'm just, I'm just curious. We got blue. What are, what are, we're going to end up with no image. <laughs> that actually looks kind of cool. Let's see. That's kind of cool. So anyways, you guys can play around with this stuff. That's how you get to it. That's how you add a LUTs to your timeline. If you want to do a preset, that is the video. And I will catch you in the next video.